because you have to eat something, you have to make a choice every day. And that means whether you want to or not, you're involved in this issue, every single person. And so it's a, it's a perfect arena to teach people individual responsibility for our global well-being. And that feels so integral to our most basic way of being in the world. And so teaching that, that's what the sanctuary is all about, really, getting people to be more conscious, to be more aware. Wilderness Ranch is founded on the concept of Ahimsa. Ahimsa is a Sanskrit word that um, was the concept by which Gandhi lived his life. And it means nonviolence or non-injury. We are all practicing vegans who live here at the sanctuary. And um, basically what that means is that we live by the concept of Ahimsa. And we ask the question before we do anything, before we buy anything, before we have any, do any kind of an action, we ask the question, is this in the best interest um, of this animal, of the earth, or of this person? And we make an effort to do as little harm by our actions as possible. And that really is, veganism is really a philosophy that we live by. It's not a set of rules about what we eat or don't eat. It really is a way of living, a way of being in the world that seeks to add more love and um, create less fear. Once I came out here to uh, really see what it was all about, to see a pig, to see a chicken, to see a sheep that had for so long all you kn knew of these animals was for a food source. And all of a sudden a light basically came on in my head that these animals had feelings, they had thoughts, they had emotions, and, and it was right in front of my eyes. I couldn't deny that anymore. And, and that's, I think that's so much the problem with the people today is they don't want to believe it, they don't want to see it. But once you come here, you can't, you don't have a choice. It's right there in front of you. Here's this chicken that jumps up on your lap and starts nuzzling up against your neck. And from all your life, all you've heard is that chickens are crops. They're not live. They're just an inanimate object. And all of a sudden, you have a chicken here that's telling you that I'm not an inanimate object. I'm a living being. I love you. Uh, you need to love me back. The education is really what it's all about. Um, from the vet students, from the interns, to the kids that come out, the volunteers who are here, well, the veterinarians who visit, the meter reader who comes out from the electric company, gets an education. He comes out and he said, you know, how, how, I didn't know they abused farm animals. And by just coming out here and seeing what we do, he's touched by it and his life has changed. Coming here gave me hope because being veterinarians where we take a vow to protect and care for animals and I don't see that in this society so often and I see people unwilling to even look at the inhumanity of factory farming. They don't want to even know about it. It's affected our children. Some of their earliest memories are, are our kitchen floor and you know sheep from uh, and, and pigs from wilderness ranch and taking care of them. The fact that my son, through being part of the Wilderness Ranch, shows this is a way of life for himself, I think it's more rewarding than anything. I learned a lot from this horse. Um, a lot of what I know about respecting all life, I learned from Rudy. Um, I thought, because I was such an animal lover, that I could uh, communicate with him, and uh, that I would bring him around, and he would love to be a show horse, and we'd have a lot of fun. Well, I learned a huge lesson from this guy. I learned that I wasn't really seeing him as an individual. I saw him as a beautiful horse. He was Rudy. He wasn't anything other than who he is, his own personality. And I started to understand his pain. Um, he didn't want to be ridden. He didn't want to be told when to go and where to go and how to do it. He didn't want to do things on, on my terms. In that process of learning who he was as an individual, um, I learned about my biases and I started seeing the way I was treating dogs and cats and the way that I was relating to farm animals and all other animals. I started really generalizing and realizing to a much bigger picture that all animals really deserve our respect. They're all individuals. It 
they don't want to be told when to go, where to go, where to live, any more than anybody, any person does. They want to make their own decisions. They have their own agendas. I'm forever grateful for him for teaching me this lesson to uh, see the individual in every sheep and every cow and every horse and every person. <laughs> Rosie and Rudy were very unlikely friends because Rudy is a big, tall, thoroughbred horse, and Rosie is a little potbelly pig with two-inch legs. And uh, Rosie basically was a dump-off pig. Uh, somebody just dumped her, and uh, she was hiding in our compost pile for a couple of weeks before we realized she was really there. In that process, she became friends with Rudy. That was kind of cute, except that the other cows in the, and steers in the pasture were chasing her, so we had to get her out of there. And so she lived on the other side of the barn. She was determined to go back and see Rudy, and she went every day. She'd hike all the way around the driveway. This was maybe a fourth of a mile um, all the way around there. She'd go up to the top of the hill, and then, she'd, and then she'd sneak under the fence and go back down there to visit him, and we'd have to take her back out because the cows would chase her. It was dangerous for her, so she couldn't be there. And one morning, I was watching her. Um, I was feeding, and I saw that she had gone down there, and she was in this huge, big open space, and the horses were clear up at the other end of the driveway, maybe you know, another eighth of a mile away, something like that. And I saw these two dogs who came down the hill and they were going to attack her. And I saw them at the same time I saw her. I don't know what to do. I thought, there's no way I can get there in time. I can't get her. I can't save her. I can't. If I did get there, I don't know how to protect her. It was just my heart was up in my throat. How am I going to do this? And at the same time I saw Rudy about, you know, clear up there at the other end, ears back, teeth bared, running like a freight train. She, he just came barreling down there and intercepted the dogs, chased them around and around and around her, and then chased them up away, and then went back over to her and escorted her over to the fence. And I was like, oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> I've had some people say to me, well, what big, what's the big deal here? There's only 30 or 40 animals here. How could she be doing any good? How can that change people's lives? How can that change the world? But what you see when you come here is not the 30 or 40 animals. It's those 30 or 40 animals are telling you about the millions and millions of animals out there that are suffering, that they need the same respect that the animals here are getting. It's just not the 40 animals here. It's the 40 million animals that die every single day. Ha, ha, ha.